Yes. Um, yeah, that's interesting. You know, the artists were only really about 10 years older than the teenagers, you know? So, like, let's say, like, a guy like Ed Ruscha might have been 26, 27 at the time. Um, and so the kids were, like, looking up to them. These are, like, the hipsters of the beatnik era. Uh, in Venice Beach, they had, um, you know, several coffee houses, and that, that Venice scene moved up to La Cienega. And so people have been watching the beatniks for a long time, you know, and uh, even 77 Sunset Strip, the television show, was sort of based on a beatnik thing, and there was a coffee house in that show where they would go talk to some guy, Bongo Benny, you know, and Bongo Benny would give all the clues to the detectives and stuff. So, so but the artists um, had a big influence on the kids because uh, what was happening was the first escalation of the Vietnam War. and. Uh, some of the artists and some of the people involved with the art scene found out about uh, the escalation before it really happened because Rand Corporation, which was a military planning thing, was based in Santa Monica. And a lot of the Rand Corporation, uh, whatever you would call them then, yuppies now, uh, would be the guys who could afford to buy the art. And so there was a lot of dialogue going on. And uh, there was a guy at UCLA, Roman or something like that. And he was in touch with Walter Hopps of the Ferris Gallery, and he found a lot of information about Megadeth and all these things that they were planning for Vietnam. And uh, so the artists got, got all the word of this stuff, and they, they started this thing called uh, a dialogue on Vietnam, and they had a, a debate between members of Rand Corporation and um, the artists. And there was like, it was at the Warner Playhouse in uh, on La Cienega and about 400 people came and they decided to put speakers outside. There was about 400 people in the parking lot and most of it was the teen scene people and they were all like just standing around because they were the ones who stood to get drafted, you know? And uh, this is basically how the artists, you know, ended up touching the kids. They had two dialogue on Vietnam events and after being totally frustrated with the people at Rand who were gonna do whatever they were gonna do, um, they, they created this thing called the Artist Tower of Protests on Sunset Strip, and it was like 400 international artists had, had put in like boards about this big, and they all were anti-war messages, and they put it up like a big billboard all around this one corner in the hills, and, and it was up for about three months. And so this definitely had, and when you see footage of that event, you can see that it's mostly the kind of kids who had been going down to see the birds or the doors or love or or out to Long Beach Arena to see the Rolling Stones. And that's another thing is, is we also think of, when you think of rock, we think of people over 21 going to clubs. But the, the, in those days, it was like 15 and up, you know? And so today, I just think that teenagers don't have that kind of opportunity to see the bands that they really want to see. They have to wait till they're 21, whereas in those days, everybody could just go. And uh, the whiskey used to put a stamp on your hand and said, no booze for yous, you know? And, You'd be able to go see whoever. Well, that's the answer to that question. Any more questions?